Well, things escalated pretty quickly since the last time we had a conversation, or the last time I had a conversation with you. Um, welcome to another episode of Broadway Breakdown. This is episode number 13. I cannot believe this is episode 13. I still can't believe there's people out there that listen to me and actually value my opinion. You guys are fucking incredible, and I love you all. Um, you know, this is a ton of fun for me to do. I love doing what I'm doing. I'm loving the interactions with different people. I'm getting a ton and ton of messages from different people just wanting to talk Rangers, and that was the whole basis for my videos. Um, just talk about the game that I love, the team that I love, and hopefully some other people out there share my opinions, and it seems like some of you do. Uh, some of you don't, and that's fine too. You know, everybody loves this team for their own reason. They want this team to succeed. Hopefully we're on the right path. Um, a lot, like I said, has happened since our last episode. We've had the roster freeze, we had the roster freeze lifted, we had the entry draft, we had the expansion draft, we had trades, we had signings, we had goodbyes, we had hellos, we had arguments, you name it. It happened in the last two weeks and it's pretty fucking nuts. Um, especially because free agency hasn't even started yet. That starts on Wednesday. Um, so, you know, we're going to pretty much dive into it at this point. Um, might be a little bit out of order. My brain's kind of fried. I don't remember the order things happened in, so I'm trying to keep this in order, but this is everything that's happened in the last two weeks or so. Um, obviously, first, um, before the roster freezes happened, we had the trade for Barclay Goodrow's rights. Uh, we gave up a seventh round draft pick to Tampa Bay, which is an A-plus trade in my books, just for the fact that we were the only team at the time. I think we had seven days to sign him. Uh, so the trade in a vacuum in and of itself, no contract, nothing else, because we'll talk about that in a minute. A-plus, definitely the type of player we need on this team. He's a gritty vet um, who doesn't, you know, isn't afraid to throw his body, throw his weight around. Um, he's not afraid to step up and agitate people either. And he's a Stanley Cup champion, two-time Stanley Cup champion. It's a great caliber player to have on our team. In a vacuum, like I said, great move. Uh, the other move that happened on roster freeze day was the trade of Brett Howden, a.k.a. the Man Rocket, over to Vegas. Uh, in return, we got a fourth round pick and an AHL body. Um, side note on that guy, the reason I don't have his name is because I don't predict him making the roster anytime soon, at, if at all. Um, there was reports that the only reason he was added in was because Vegas would have been... Um, non-compliant with the rosters had the trade happened without an additional body coming back to the Rangers. Um, so hopefully Brett Howden can bring something besides his great jawline over to Vegas because that's about all he did here in New York. Um, you know, we've talked about him a lot. Not quite sure where people value him and why they value him the way they do. The fact that we got a fourth round pick for a guy that had, I think, two goals last year is pretty frightening. Um, we'll touch on that trade and a little trade later. Um, but all in all, that move itself, you know, I'd give an A as well. We gave up not an asset. We were able to protect um, an additional body in Kevin Rooney, which I thought was great. I think Rooney was the player they should have kept. Um, I know a lot of people were complaining about Blackwell leaving. I think Blackwell was a flash in a pan. He was playing with Panarin and he was playing with Strom. Um, you know, up until last season, the guy didn't do much in his NHL career. Um, so I don't, I don't think he's a big loss. I think Rooney would have been a little bit bigger. Rooney to me is kind of like Esper Foss, but in a different role. Um, you know, he's not afraid to go into the corner, dig out pucks. He's not afraid to stand up for himself, his teammates. He's scrappy. He fights, um, not fights, fights, but he's a fighter. Um, you know, and he'll, he'll do the dirty work. And I think he was a really good person to keep and to, um, protect from the expansion draft. So I give an A plus on that one as well, just also because it was my theory that once Howden signed his extension, they were going to protect Rooney. Worked out for this guy in two, two more, two, wait, worked out for me in two ways. You, okay, we're good. You got it. Great. Perfect. Um, so after all that happened, um, the roster freeze happened at one o'clock. So no other moves between, I think it was Saturday till Wednesday. Um, when the expansion draft start, or no, it was Thursday, the day after the expansion draft. So no other moves were allowed to be made between that, that time unless it involved Seattle. Um, our protection list came out. We did, like I said, lose uh, Colin Blackwell. We also exposed, um, I believe, Hayek Potato and Julian Gauthier. Um, Gauthier, I think, could be an interesting piece to this team if he sticks around. I think he could be somewhat of a Gallant-style player. Um, I don't know if there's room for him anywhere with, once this roster is fully constructed because we're nowhere near close to that. Um, but he's an interesting piece to have. He's, you know, might be a good trade asset. He's kind of Chris Kreider light. Um, he's fast. He's gritty. He's tough on the puck. Um, you know, some teams might find value in that. 
I don't know if it's going to be us. Maybe it will be. Maybe it won't be. But he's another good piece to keep around. Um, uh, sorry, I got my notes here because so much happened. Uh, dun, dun, dun. At this point, um, come Wednesday for the expansion draft, a lot of people were hearing rumors that the Rangers were looking to add a veteran defenseman. Um, as I've mentioned many times on these episodes in the past, uh, I was hoping myself for Brendan Smith. Unfortunately, that is not happening. Brendan Smith will not be returning to the team, as the Rangers announced. Um, so they were looking at Mark Giordano. He's a captain and defenseman from Calgary Flames. He was left unprotected. Many people expected him to go to Seattle, which is what happened. Um, but before that, there was trade talk of either potentially sending Strom and a pick over to Calgary to get Giordano and their ninth pick, I believe, or their tenth pick. Um, and then there was also a potential three-team trade where the Rangers would send Strom to, to Calgary. Uh, a pick over to, I don't know, it somehow worked out where we were going to get a defenseman and get rid of Strom. Um, that didn't happen. Uh, Giordano actually showed up to the draft, so it kind of would have been a slap in the face of the franchise if they sh had him show up, got a huge ovation from the crowd, and then shipped him off. Um, a lot of people said it wouldn't happen because of that. I do just want to point out it did happen with Vegas. I cannot remember who it was at the time. Um, but they, you know, introduced somebody, got a loud ovation, and then the next day they turned around and traded him. Um, didn't happen with the Rangers, but it could happen. So obviously that means the Rangers are looking to add a defensive piece, which we all kind of knew, and to fill out their bottom six, which again we kind of knew, plus they needed a center. So a whole lot of rumors were flying in Rangers camp at this time. Um, like I said, the trade freeze lifted on Thursday at 1 after the expansion draft. Most people expected the Eichel saga to either end on Thursday or to end before the draft on Friday. Um, a lot of people, from what I remember reading and hearing, is that the Rangers almost had like an inside track to Eichel, um, but Buffalo was asking for additional pieces that the Rangers were not willing to meet, so they asked elsewhere. Um, found out some news about that today, so I will get into that at the end. Um, but. Eichel to New York at this point was pretty much locked in. You know, we pretty much knew he was coming. Um, just didn't know when. So draft day came. Everybody expected the Rangers to either obtain Eichel or somehow just not have their 15th pick. Um, neither of those things happened. We did not get Eichel and we had our 15th pick. But we did make a trade. I hated it at the time. Um, I still kind of hate it just because of the player we gave up and the assets we got back, but I understand it a lot better now. Um, so we did trade, unfortunately, Pavel Buchnevich over to St. Louis Blues in exchange for um, a second round pick and I can't remember his first name. I had it in my head and I can't. I think it's Tommy Blaze. Um, Blaze is a third, fourth line guy, almost like a Baron-esque potential, not potential because he's in the NHL while Barron isn't. Uh, Barron can turn into this guy, basically. Um, he's, you know, physical, he's heavy, he hits, he dishes out punishment, he gets under people's skin, he's not much of an offensive threat uh, by any means, um, but he's he's a solid player. He's a solid bottom six piece, and it's exactly what this team needed. Drury went out and got it, but I think it just cost a little too much. I think Buchnevich should have gotten something better than that in return. Um, I do know the Rangers actually asked out to or reached out to St. Louis to start this trade. So it wasn't St. Louis interested in Booch, it was vice versa. Maybe that's why they gave up so much because they came out first, who knows, but you know, it is what it is. Um, what I really wanted to talk about with this is aside from the asset management on this trade, the reason why it makes sense now, um, if you think about it logistically, the Rangers, as of right now, Booch traded have to find spots for Capococco, Lafreniere, uh, Panarin, Kreider, and Kraftsov. That was before adding Blaze, that was before adding Goodrow, that's minus any other trades. So that's six players that potentially could be on a top six pairing that only have four spots. Something had to give. Kreider wasn't moving because of his no movement clause. I was really hoping they'd find a way to work around that, send him out to Seattle. I, that was what I was leading off with some of my videos in the past. Um, I had heard some rumors that that's a potential, that they were definitely looking into that. That was more um, uh, Gorton and JD than it was Jury. So I was hoping it may have continued over. That would have been a lot of cap space to save. That would have been a vet you know, off the team, a bad contract off the team, and it would have given more space for the kids. But that didn't happen. 
Um, we're not getting rid of Kraftsoft for nothing. We're not getting rid of Kako. We're not getting rid of Breadman. We're not getting rid of Loff. So it really left Buchnevich as the odd man out. You know, I don't want to see Kako or Loff on the third line again. I don't really want to see Kraftsoff on the third line, but I think that's where he starts, um, unless he's traded. So it's, you know, it was more of a logjam and a necessity than anything. Yes, they could have held on to him for better compensation, maybe at the trade deadline, maybe let go of him next year. Um, but there really wasn't any room for him. So as much as the return sucked, it had to happen for this team to take their next step, uh, for the kids to get more ice time, for the kids to jump up onto the power play units and to do what we need to do as a Ranger team. So yes, it absolutely sucked because Buchnevich is one of my favorite Ranger players. Um, he was one of the first ones to actually like one of my videos about him. I did a report card on him, which you can find on my shorts. Um, it's going to be actually moving over to the main page, like I've been mentioning. So that's coming soon. So keep an eye out for that. Um, but you know, it, it sucks to lose him. It hurts. He was a great two-way player. He really came into his own this past season. He kind of held this team together. Um, I think he was kind of got the shit end of the stick when AV was here. He kept him in the doghouse for no apparent fucking reason other than he's being AV and he likes to chew gum. Um, so it, it sucks to see him go, you know. But in return, we got the physicality wet dream that everybody's been spewing about. Um, you know, our lines are starting to look formidable. Our top two lines are basically skill lines. The bottom two lines are going to be the, the goonish grit type physicality guys. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see how that works out, how it plays out. Booch, we love you. you know, I hope the door is always open for you in New York because I think you'd be a great part of this team. Um, I know your teammates miss you and your fans miss you. You know, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the other interesting thing about this Blaze kid is that he actually has a history of Tom Wilson. Um, Tom Wilson's pretty much in our heads. I believe he was trending at the time of this trade and everything. Um, you know, the kid, I guess, played in a preseason game, got cross-checked from behind by Wilson, and he missed the season. Um, whether that factor, factored into getting him or not, I have no idea, but hopefully Tom Wilson's not in Dolan's head that much, um, where, you know, we start trading Strom for Reeves, because I would hate to fucking see that. Um, you know, a lot of people were saying, uh, going back to the Booch trade, it was a salary dump. It really was. You know, we expected something else to happen off of that. You know, potentially the Eichel trade, maybe another name that we weren't expecting um, because we did clear some room for that. And, of course, nothing happened. Um, I will talk about the draft in a little bit. Um, but going back to Booch and, again, and the uh, compensation we got for him. I was talking to one of my really good friends, Dan. He's a huge, huge Rangers fan, almost as big as me, if not around the same level as me. Um, he'll actually hopefully be on an episode soon, so you guys will be able to see what I'm talking about, get to hear his insights on this as well. Uh, but he gave me a really good quote, and it's very prudent to, to uh, Buchnevich's situation, and that is, your value is only what others are willing to give up. I am sure they asked for the stars and the moon for Buchnevich, but if a team's not willing to pay it, you're not going to get it. So if we, you know, we value him as a fan, as a first line player for worth a first round pick and a prospect, you know, St. Louis didn't see it that way. So you're only as valuable as other teams see you. Um, it sucks, but sometimes we do, you know, overvalue our own players. It happens. We see them more often than not. So we're going to give them a benefit of the doubt. Um, but, you know, like I said earlier, we all knew the grit, the physicality, the dirty play. It was coming. It, it was coming and something had to give for it to happen. It wasn't just going to be, you know, bottom six guys leaving the team. There was going to be holes in this team and they're going to get filled by someone, whether it's kids or an outside source. Um, so it sucks. It does. But, you know, Booch will have a great career, I think. And I think we're going to be better in the long run for it because it also saves cap space down the end for the future um, to get some of these kids signed to the contracts that are coming up, especially Fox, Benajad, Kako, Laf. You know, you got to keep them around. Um, Fox is going to command a lot of money. He's going to command a lot of money and he better be paid every single dime of it. He better not leave this team until he retires. Um, but other than that, you know, sacrifices are going to have to be made. One of them was already made, and I'm sure there are more coming. Um, whether that's for Eichel or for another player, I don't know. I, you know, I don't have much inside information. I get as much as I can, um, but I don't, I don't know the situation right now. Um, on to the draft. Like I said, the most people expected the Rangers to not have the 15th pick. Obviously, they ended up with it. It was actually technically the 16th pick, but we won't get into that. Um, and they used it on a winger, which raised a lot of eyebrows because, like I just got through mentioning, we have a ton of wingers. Right now, our center depth is Zibanejad, 
Strom, Rooney, Goodrow potentially, maybe Heedle. I've heard rumors that this team or this uh, coaching staff doesn't see Heedle as a center, so I wouldn't even put him in there. Um, we need centers. We know that, and we went out and drafted a winger. Granted, he won't be ready for a year or two, um, but centers would have been great. You know, we had the guy that I was really looking forward to the Rangers drafting, Svechkov, sitting there at 15. I was really excited for the pick. I really thought they were going to go with him. He excited me. His intangibles were great. He would have fit in perfectly with this team, and they went with um, Othman instead. Um, he's another winger. He is physical, can score um, and shoot. He's kind of an offensive, defensive, more offensive-minded forward first. Um, two years down the road, though, so who knows what's going to happen between now and then. He might not even see this team. Maybe he's sent off somewhere else in a trade. You know, I didn't even think of that till just now, so that could be a potential possibility. They sign this kid to a contract, and they trade him eventually down the road. He never sees a game for the Rangers. Um, but basically, the Rangers kind of crapped the bed, I think, in the draft. They wanna, went after a lot of wingers, um, a lot of physicality, you know, the key words that we've been mentioning all offseason. That's exactly what they went and did in the draft when they should have gotten center help, I think. But we'll see what happens. I'm very interested in why they decided to draft a goalie. A kid is 6'8", which is not a good sign because many there aren't many tall goalies in the league. Um, but, you know, we'll see we'll see where it goes. The, I, I know the next pick was, I can't even pronounce their first names, I'm not going to try. Um, there's another winger by the name of Grubb. Um, again, he was a reach from what I've heard by all accounts. Drew's way, great guy to follow on Twitter if you want to know um, your amateurs coming in. Um, you know, basically a, a massive overreach. Got him in the third round, and he was projected, I think, in the hundreds. So not sure what we're doing, but again, he has the grit. He has the intangibles that the front office fell in love with. Um, but as of this moment, right now, it is Monday. Something happened with my video earlier. I don't know why it uploaded. It actually got deleted, so I'm trying to do this really quick and hit all the points that I hit last night. Um, but as of today, which is Monday, no major trades have happened. There is rumor of a signing, which I'll get to at the end of this. Um, but when I was making my video, the, the part that I was questioning was, who is going to be our second center? Um, there's not many free agent names out there. Sam Bennett just got signed by Florida today. Um, you know, I, I know I mentioned a couple. I have a couple written down. I got Kuznetsov. I have Krejci. Um, Krejci's probably likely to go back either to Boston or end his career in the Czech Republic. I don't see him kind of leaving for another NHL team. It would be great to have him. Um, another, you know, vet that knows how to win. But I don't I don't think he's possible. Um, and then there's also Paul Snasny. I think he's a little too old. Um but he could be decent for us as an option. Uh, the big name I hear going around now is Philip Denault. Uh, he currently plays, I think, for Calgary. I could be totally wrong on that. Montreal, one of the Canadian teams. Um, I didn't know much about him, honestly, until today. I wasn't very impressed with his numbers. Uh, but after reading some of the guys that know hockey and know players, his profile sounds pretty intriguing. Um, he's a very, very good defensive center. Um, he pretty much shuts down whoever he's going against. He's a three-time Selkie finalist, I believe. Um, just doesn't put up a lot of points, but he was also not really on a team as stacked as the Rangers. So he could be an interesting choice um, to come to the Rangers. I hope we don't overpay for him. Um, but center depth is needed in the NHL as a whole. So it's a premium position. You're going to have to pay, pre pay premium dollars for you know free agents that might be a lower tier. Um, but... We'll see what happens, you know. There's still a lot of time. Like I said earlier, free agency hasn't even started yet. That starts Wednesday. Um, so we'll see what happens from there. Um, the Rangers did, uh, I guess, technically sign today Patrick Nemeth um, from Colorado. He is going to be probably our sixth uh, defenseman. He's a left-handed shot. Um, would pair great with Nils Lundqvist if we don't trade him. Um, he would even be a good pair with anyone. Um, I think he could slide up and down the... Uh, the defensive pairings. He could either be third, second, or first. Uh, he could definitely probably play some penalty kill minutes uh, as a second unit. Um, he's got no offensive game to, to it, though, so he's more of a stay-home defenseman, which is great because we have a lot of kids that are offensive defensemen. Um, so that's going to allow them to do a little bit more of what they want to do. You know, Fox, Miller, uh, Truba to an extent, they'll be able to do a little bit more if they're out on the ice with this guy. Um, so, I, you know, I think this is the second 
maybe third move I'll give a passing grade to Jury right now. I think this makes our defense a lot better at this point. Um, his grades um, with the charts are you know pretty much all blue. Blue is good. Um, nothing really to complain about. So I believe the offer was two or three years for 2.5 million AAV, which really isn't that bad for a guy that's going to be here a couple of years. Hopefully it helps um, shape this roster up. Um, so I, I think I touched on everything. I tried to do it quick. If I didn't touch on anything, please let me know in the comments. I'll try to comment back as soon as I can. Uh, you guys have any questions or anything like that, obviously you know how to reach me. I have my website, broadwaybluebleeder.com. You can find me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, you, you name it, I'm there, Twitter. Um, come have a conversation. Love talking Rangers, love to talk to my fans. Um, for those that don't know, I have mentioned in the past, I will mention again, we are 11 subscribers away from somebody winning this puck. Um, once we hit 100, this is a certified Mike Richter autographed puck. Um, once we hit 100 subscribers, I'll find a way to put you guys into a little list and whoever gets picked wins the Mike Richter puck. So make sure you subscribe. Uh, the easiest way we're going to do this, if you guys don't mind, in the description below is my... Uh, links to my social media pages. Just go to my Twitter page, either send me a direct message or um, write, you know, send me a tweet with a screenshot that you're subscribed and the hashtag Broadway Blue Bleeder Giveaway or BBB Giveaway. Either or, that just keeps it easier for us to, you know, keep everything in line to, so we can get the right people um, into the list so that you have your chance to win the Richter puck. Like I said, no money by you coming out. I will pay for everything. You know, I just want to give a thank you to someone out there for, for potentially listening to me. Even if you don't, the fact that you subscribed and found me is fucking amazing. Um, so just a little bit of appreciation. I'm hopefully going to be doing that a little bit more. Not more, but I'll be doing that a bunch. Um, you know, I think we'll have some fun giveaways and things to do like that. Uh, probably going to get an email list out very soon. So if you guys want to sign up for that, it makes it much, much easier for me to keep track of giveaways and things like that. Um, so that's just a little bit of housekeeping there. Um, like I said earlier, I'm going to be moving my shorts. Currently, it's Broadway Blue Bleeder shorts on YouTube. They're 30 second videos, just you know, describing quick things that happened during the day or quick uh, thoughts I had about the Rangers. Um, I currently have, like I said, my own page for that. I'm going to move that over to this page, Broadway Blue Bleeder, so that there's more things for you guys to uh, take a look at while you're here. Um, and depending on what happens with free agency, I may or may not do a live Q&A for you guys. Um, if that's something you're interested in, let me know. Uh, definitely comment below or just get in touch with me. Let me know if that's something you guys are interested in. Could definitely, definitely set that up. Um, and until next time, let's, let's hope we keep our guys. Oh, let me touch on uh, the Eichel thing. So I did hear rumors today that Chris Drury was asked to give up certain prospects and was basically laughing in the face of Adams. Um, he would not put up Schneider or Nils Lundqvist at this point. Um, and from what I've heard, pretty much anybody the Sabres asked for that was a high talent young kid, Jury said absolutely not. I don't know if that's a long game by him, which would make sense to me. Um, Cause if they're asking, you know, if Schneider puts you over the top, you, I, I will drive him to Buffalo myself and not ask for gas money. Um, so we'll see what happens. I, I think, I hope the saga will end one way or the other by Thursday, I, I think is going to be the deadline. Um, I don't. I think if Eichel's still on the Sabres come Thursday with free agency opening, teams are going to need to have you know backup plan in place that they're going to have to start going for. Um, I, I don't see Eichel being traded. He may sit out a year. I don't know. It's going to get interesting because Eichel's camp is saying he wants out, wants out, wants out, still wants surgery. Buffalo is saying he's going to be on the team. So we'll see what happens. Um, hopefully we'll get an answer. And um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, guys. And I appreciate you all so, so much. We are, what, two months out? Three months out from regular season hockey. It's going to be here before you know it. This team's going to look different. Got a good feeling. I have a real good feeling. So uh, keep your hopes up. Let's hope for some better things. And let's hope for some impact playmakers. Until then, let's go Rangers.